Welcome to the Vegas Nose Podcast presented by BuckeyeScoop.com, where we try and uh, handicap our college and NFL picks each week. I'm your host, Mark Givler. I'm joined by Bill Green. Uh, interesting weekend last weekend. Bill, did you survive? I survived. You know, I broke even in uh, college and I broke even in the NFL. So three and three college, two and two NFL. So hanging in there right now, not setting any records, not winning any money, you know, not headed for a shark, shark loan anywhere either. So maybe this week is the week we get up over the Mendoza line and get some plus in, in the column there. College has been a struggle for me. Um, another losing week. Uh, I did break even in the NFL, which even from, you know, this year's has not been, uh, that's not my best week. I've, you know, been above 500 a, pr- a pretty good bit um, in NFL. So uh, not the greatest week in NFL either. It's going two and two. So I could use a good week right now. Um, gosh, it is interesting right now. We have a lot of COVID stuff going on and uh, see who's going to play and who's not going to play and who's going to, you know, Nick Saban's going to be on the sideline or not be on the sideline. And so a lot to dissect this week. Um, but Bill, I think you found a bunch of games that, that you like, I think you're on another handful <laughs> of games. Um, you know, give us, give us your first pick for college. Yeah. So far this year in college, 10, 10 and record, um, had three winning weeks, one losing week, which was an unbelievably terribly losing week. And then one week I broke even. So, you know, just kind of hanging in there right now. The first pick that I like is the Tennessee Kentucky game. My line is way too low for a total. Um, 45 and a half. I, I charted this thing out as like a 52 or 53 point game, like a, a 28, 24 game. Um, so I'm taking that game over, over the 45 and a half, Tennessee and Kentucky. Um, the way people are scoring right now, I don't think that's asking a lot. So that's my first pick of that one. Not my best pick by any means, but it's definitely one I'm going to play myself. Yeah, I, you know, and maybe this is a good thing because, you know, the weeks I've, I've liked a lot of games the last few weeks and it hasn't been good to me. <laughs> so, um the first couple weeks I actually started uh, pretty strong and I didn't like the games. I just, I only picked one or two a week and I, I wasn't really even very enthusiastic about those picks. And um, I actually did pretty well. And then I got enthusiastic about some of this stuff and I started losing. Um, So maybe it's, it's better uh, this week that I do not love a lot of games, but um one I do really like is I've got Ole Miss minus one and a half at Arkansas. Um, Arkansas has been better than I expected. Sam Pittman's doing a really nice job there. Um, yes, Bama hangover for Ole Miss. Um, had a shot last week. Couldn't couldn't uh, couldn't come through. But I just I think they're a much better team than Arkansas. I, I've watched a lot of them this year, and I just gosh, I, I have to think they're going to win that game by, by at least a touchdown or two. Um, so I'm going with it. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, I, I've been on some weird stuff with Ole Miss this year, so um, maybe not, maybe not want to trail me on that one, but we'll see. Uh, Bill, what else you got? Yeah, I, I really like um, the way the Duke offense is rounded form there. I think Cutcliffe is a Heck of an offensive mind. I don't think their team defensively is any good at all. And I think NC State is going to run up and down the field on them. I really like what NC State has done this year. So I'm going with another total here. It's a high. That thing is set at 59 and a half. But I see both teams over 30 in this game. And I'm taking this game over as well. And, um, again, just counting on Duke and NC State to go up and down the field on each other score a ton of points with an overtime game. It kind of helped you with Oklahoma and Texas uh, <laughs> yep, last week. Certainly so did. Overtime is always, <laughs> is always welcome. So yeah, Duke NC state over the total of 59 and a half. I'm rolling with that. I am going to stay in the ACC. Um, oh gosh. I think I'm, I might be falling for a sucker line here. And every time I say that I end up, being correct about that. And I end up losing. 
Um, God, Boston College plus 11 and a half at Virginia Tech. That's a lot of points for a team that's played really well so far. I am taking the points there plus 11 and a half. I think Virginia Tech's got a good team. I, I just, that's a lot. That's a lot of freaking points. Boston College has really played well so far. Um, they're expecting a lot of offense in that game. The over under 62 and a half. I don't know if I love that for my bet. Um, I, th- I was kind of thinking maybe it'd be, uh, you know, maybe a, a mid fifties over under that seems, that seems a little high, but um, I'll, I will take Boston college. I think they've got a, a puncher's chance for the upset and um, I like them to cover. Um, you know, you and I, we, we never discuss our plays before the show. And I think this is our sixth show. And I don't think we've ever disagreed on a play yet. There's never been a time yet to game and I take the other side. And here again, Boston College, I saw 12 um, as the number on Ben Online. Yep. And I took it. And I'm with you on that one. I think Halfley has done a tremendous job. It concerns me that they can't run the ball real well. They can't run the ball at all. But they are throwing it. They're playing good defense. They play so freaking hard. If you've watched them, I mean, they battle and they fight. I mean, they took the North Carolina wire. They're good. And BC has been a covering machine over the past couple of years. So I'm rolling with you on that one. I'm taking BC. I got the number at 12, locked it in. And um, I also feel that they can win this game. Um, this a pretty good team. Pretty darn good team. But I think BC is good. And I'm riding with Halfley again here, and I'm, I'm taking BC plus the 12. And I guess I should get this in real quick because um, this will uh, obviously it's the Friday, October 16th episode, and we do have some Friday night games. We have some games tonight. So um, I am I am liking BYU minus five at Houston. So that that's my uh, that's my third pick. Um, I do have a fourth that I'm going to go with, but uh, for now we'll, we'll stay with this one. Uh, Their offense is just on fire right now. Uh, They're scoring at will. It's, you know, it's, it's a, it's a road game and you know, I Houston's interesting, interesting opponent. I I don't, I don't think they're particularly strong this year. Uh, I, I just, I think BYU's offense just keeps humming. It's, it's over under 62 and a half. So they are expecting a pretty high scoring game. Uh, BYU by 10 sounds about right to me. Um, I'm going to go with that one. Uh, have a little uh, a Friday night uh, play. I, I had some early season success with the non-traditional kicks. So we'll, we'll go back to a Friday kick and see if, see if something good happens for me. What else you got, Bill? Yeah, I kind of, um, a game that I watched real closely last week was the AM Florida game. Yep. And I was so impressed with AM. Even when I thought they were going to lose, I thought their defensive for good. Florida could not run the ball on them at all. And I really liked Kellen Mond. I liked what he was doing there. Um, I think they have better players than Mississippi State. <clears throat> I think Jimbo's got them rolling right now, coming off that win. Uh, there's a lot of money down right now in Mississippi State. The line has continually dropped all week. I got it at five, and I took it. So I'm laying I'm, – I'm riding with Jimbo and Kellen Mond and that group here, and I'm going to lay five points against Mississippi State. And um, I'm, I'm pretty high on the Aggies after what I saw last week. That line's almost fishy to me. Like, it should, it, it should be higher. That's that's a little weird to me. That's that's it kind started of started higher. Yeah, it yeah. started at seven and a half, and it's been bet all the way down to five. So maybe I'm, you know, maybe I'm the fish here falling for a sucker play, and I just think they're the better team, and and I'm riding with them. Well, I'm doing something a little bit similar. I think this line's dropped a little bit. Um, I think right now everyone is rushing out with with the news of of Nick Saban testing positive uh, for COVID-19 and the uncertainty of what that could mean um, for the Alabama Georgia game. I think Alabama is a better team than Georgia. They're, they're, they're minus four and a half. Now I'm, I'm taking it. I'm taking four. I'm going to, I'm going to lay the four and a half. I think Alabama um, 
has an elite offense again. I know Georgia's defense is um, maybe the best in the country, certainly one of the best, but I don't think anyone's going to stop Alabama. I think Georgia has the personnel to keep it from one of those games where Alabama just scores touchdowns on, you know, 95% of their drives. I don't think it's gonna be anything like that, but I don't, I don't think you're keeping this Alabama team under 30. Uh, I, I just don't, I think you're going to have to score 35, 40 and play amazing defense to beat them this year. I think now their defense is not great, is not great. but I don't think Georgia's going to be able to just line up and bully them. I still, despite what we've seen the last couple of weeks, I'm not comfortable with their quarterback situation. So I think Alabama will still find a way to play enough defense, maybe cause a turnover or two. And, you know, Georgia's had some issues with explosive plays as well. So this isn't like a, a high octane offense that Alabama's going to have to slow down. I think Ole Miss has a better offense than Georgia. I know they, they gashed Alabama last week. I don't think Georgia's offense is as good as Ole Miss's offense. Um, so I, I think Alabama is going to surprise. I think everyone's rushing to, to bet Georgia right now because they're an underdog. And is you know what what Saban's role going to be on on Saturday night? And uh, I think this is uh, so. I'm going to play. I'm going to do if nothing else. I'm doing the contrarian stance here. I am going to take Alabama minus four and a half. Bill, I think you have at least one more pick. Yeah, and it was from that game, and I had a hard time with that game, kind of figuring out. You know, the line there, I thought it was right where it was supposed to be. I thought it was a great line. So I kind of went with the line of thinking that you're on in that Alabama is 35. And I don't think there's any way they don't. But but I don't think Alabama's going to stop Georgia. And that the total was at 56. So my thinking was I'm going to ride with a, a 35-30 game, which I don't know the ordinary. And I'm going to take over the total again. So I got three totals this week over and then two regular plays. But um, I, if I had to bet this game, I would take Alabama. Um, and, until I see Kirby beat Nick Saban, then I don't know that he can do it. And the, the couple of years, the past two times they played, Kirby's had the far better team, has had the lead and, and couldn't win it. Well, now he's out with, you know, Stetson Bennett, and I, you know, I don't believe he can beat him. But we'll see. But my favorite way to go on this one was that total, and I'm I'm taking taking the game over. I've got it at 56, and I'm looking at 31 games. So that's that's my final pick, and probably the one I like the best. A lot of totals this week. That, I, I've yeah. had some, I've had that's some good success different. with totals. I. I did miss one of my NFL. I did, man, I, boy, I botched the Eagle Steelers under last week, but um, yeah, over unders are fun. I, I like playing over unders. I just didn't see anything this week that really uh, grabbed me. Obviously you did. So um, those are always fun to me. Um, maybe even, I, did, I don't know. I just, after that win against uh, that Texas, Oklahoma <laughs> and how that, how I, what I needed, that miracle I needed in that one, that was, that was kind of, <laughs> that's what make, makes you come back, you know, the next week with more picks, I guess it just, uh, even if you had a bad week, when you get a win like that that you shouldn't get, it just kind of motivates you a little bit. Um, all right, let's move on to the NFL. Um, Bill, you have three picks this week. Is that, is that what you said before we started? Yeah, three. Okay. Um, yeah. Eight and 10 right now against the number. So I need to hit all three of them to get in the plus. The first one here is, and, and you know, it's no secret that I'm a huge Steeler fan. Uh, and for years and years and years, I think this team is overrated. I don't think they're as good as what their record is. Um, although not a Browns fan, I really like what they're doing. I like the way they can run the football and I'm taking the Browns this week, plus the three and a half against the Steelers. And, um, I, I think Cleveland might be the better team. So, and I think they can win this game. I, I'm not sold on Ben Roethlisberger being back to the old Ben Roethlisberger. And I think Cleveland's going to be able to run the ball on Pittsburgh. So, and I think they can control the game. So that's my pick. I'm going with. The Browns plus three and a half against my Steelers. 
this is going to be a theme, I think, for me this week. I have not learned this year on that. You know, it's it's weird. I'm I'm like two games above 500 in NFL, so I'm doing fine. But there's a couple of teams that I continue to be wrong about, and I'm kind of doubling down a little bit on that this weekend. So you may want to fade me this weekend in NFL. I got the Bears, and I, I see this line has moved since I got it. Um, I got the Bears plus two at the Carolina Panthers. I, I continue to think Carolina is bad. They continue to win <laughs> despite despite my thoughts that they're bad. Um, I got I saw the Bears plus two. To me, there's no rhyme or reason for that. Um, so I, I took the points there. I see it's like a pick them now. Um, so maybe I'm on the right side of this. Um, I, I guess because I it's it's moving that direction for me now, but. Um, so we'll see. I have been dead wrong on the Panthers all year. So you, you may want to consider fading me on that one. Uh, what you got next, Bill? Yeah, it had to happen finally. And we are now on opposite sides. Oh, here we and are. We talked, we joked guys, about it before the show that we were due to be on the opposite yeah. sides. Yeah. With my history of, uh, not being able to pick NFL games, I, I couldn't pick the NFL games if I had the Monday newspaper in my hand. So you got to be feeling really good here because I'm taking Carolina. I, I'm, I'm a believer. I'm a believer in Teddy Bridgewater. I think at their team, I don't believe, I think the bears are the worst four and one team in the history of the sport. <laughs> and they never should have beat Tampa Bay last week. And I'll take Teddy Bridgewater over Foles or Trubisky. I think Matt rules the job there. The team plays they play their tails off. They lost McCaffrey, and they're still running the ball. They're moving the ball well. I think they're going to play enough defense. I don't think you have to play that much defense to stop the Bears. So I think this is going to be the lock of the U here with me on the Panthers and you on the Bears. I think you should probably put your house and your future child. By the way, congratulations, expecting a child. I'd put the future college fund on the Bears. You're going to win that one. Because I'm the worst guy in the world. We're going against each other. I think that means you win this one. But I'm taking Carolina. Well, I, I certainly hope I can make a big contribution to the 529 uh, education savings account that I'm going to be opening this week. So I, I hope so. Um, what? So what did you get there on the line? I did get Carolina at pick. Uh, I think it okay. opened up at like two and a half and then it just it's been dropping all week so they're trying to sucker you in to take carolina and i'm the because i'm taking them and we'll we'll see what happens there okay yeah i uh that line's been all over the place i saw gosh i saw like plus three or i don't know it's been it's been all over um okay so we got i said i was going to double down on this you know, I, I talked about how wrong I've been on Carolina all year. Here's another one I've continually missed on. Um, I keep betting against the Colts, and uh, they've mostly made me pay for that. I'm going to do it again. I'm gonna, I am not going to learn. I am taking the Bengals plus nine and a half. I do not believe Phillip Rivers has much left in the tank. I do don't think it's going to be a very high scoring game. I don't think, you know, I think the Bengals have a shot to win. Will they win? Probably not, but 21 17 or something like that surely wouldn't surprise me. Um, so I am taking the nine and a half that the Bengals are getting at Indianapolis. And um, again, you should probably fade me on this because the Colts have, have burned me quite a few times already, but here uh, again, I'm, I'm just, I'm not learning from my mistakes. I'm doubling down on my mistakes this week. It's the Colts last week with the Browns, and that was a nice winner for me. Um, if I were to take that game, I would probably go with Cincinnati as well. I think they played really well this year. You know, they ran into a buzzsaw last week with the Ravens. That's going to happen. Um, my pick here is my favorite one, and I'm taking Green Bay. Uh, they're better than Tampa Bay. Aaron Rodgers at this point in his career is so much better than Tom Brady. It's not even funny. Um, I don't think home field is going to matter much. I think, I just think Green Bay is the better team. Um, and I think Aaron Rodgers will be the difference here. I think Rodgers is a better quarterback than Brady today. And I think that the NFL is a quarterback league. It's a quarterback game. 
And I think Aaron Rodgers keeps them with the Packers. And I think they beat the Bucs. And I think they beat them pretty easily. So that's my third. And uh, I feel pretty good about that one. Well, I do have to, I guess I do have to put the disclaimer. You did remind me. I did have the Browns last week against the Colts. So they haven't burned me every, but I, but I bet against the Colts a couple times this year. And I guess I finally did break through with the Browns last week. So I guess, I guess I'm, I guess I'm just doubling down now. Now I'm getting cocky, I guess about that, but um, yeah, I have, I have bet against the Colts, I think like three or four weeks this year. I think last week, last week was definitely the first time I was on the right side of it. So um, just throwing that out there before I give my last pick, which um, you know, Bill and I are on the opposite sides of the Carolina Chicago game, but we are on the right. We are on the same side. I am also on green Bay. Um, I got green Bay minus one. I agree with you. I think Rogers is substantially better than Brady at this point. Um, I, man, I just, I just don't know how Rogers has stopped it. No one seems to be stopping him. And Brady, Brady's been prone to some mistakes this year. Um, he's thrown a few pick sixes, had a few kind of, but I don't know if, what if you forgot what down it was last week, or I mean. So he's had a few mental lapses. I think I think Rodgers is the better quarterback at this point. I think uh, Green Bay seems to really um, have things figured out right now. It just looks like a team that knows what they're doing, knows what they are, and um, with with home fields just really not being all that significant this year, it's it's you know it's virtually a pick 'em. So um, I, I like Green Bay there minus one. Um, is there anything I know we kind of ask this we do this kind of every week and we we never actually, you know, have the stones to go through with, with some of our, you know, things that we see here and that we we talk about. But is there is there anything you're close on, right? Is there anything else you looked at and you're like, boy, I I might want to play that, but you haven't yet, Bill? Or was there anything you got close on? Yeah, I uh, hit myself in the face with a hammer just about every week with the Cowboys and I lose <laughs> with the Cowboys every week. And I'm very tempted to take them again this week. And I may still throw them in there and I'll put it on the message board if I do. Actually like the fact that they're going to Andy Dalton. I think it forces them to play the way they should have been playing all year. I think it's going to cause them to to play slower. I think they're going to be featuring Zeke more uh, running. I think they're going to become a run first team. And I think that's what they need to do. I think it's the way they need to play. I think it shortens the game. I think it keeps their awful defense on the sideline. I think it helps that offensive line establish this run in the football, which will make it easier than to throw the football. You know, we did our preseason show, and I said that I really like the signing of Andy Dalton. I thought this is a good situation for him with that game, with those receivers, and, and I think they're going to play well with Dalton. And that's no knock on Dak, who's amazing. But I think it changes the complexion of how they'll play the game. And I think it forces Dallas to play a way that's more complementary to the skill set that they have. And it'll protect that defense and keep them off the field. And they'll get Zeke churning this week. So I, I'm close to betting Dallas again, even though I'm, you know, I'm, I'm now sitting in a rented apartment because I lost my house on <laughs> you know, earlier in the season, I'll probably be living in my car if I do it this week, but um, yeah, Dallas would be one I'm really close on right now. I looked at that too. And I don't think I've been quite as aggressive on Dallas as you have this year, but I've definitely played them a couple of times and they've burned me. They have burned me really badly. Uh, So I stayed away from that. And um, there's another game I liked and it it just, I, I can't really explain it. So I like the Giants minus two and a half against Washington. Um, Washington just seems like a mess right now. Not that the Giants aren't, but the, you know the Giants play just. Mm-hmm. We just watched the Giants play a competitive sixty minutes against Dallas. I mean, very well could have won that game. Um, I think. I think there's some semblance of life with that franchise, whereas I see Washington as just completely lost they don't know you know, this, this quarterback roulette they're doing right now to me is insane um so i like the giants minus two and a half and the reason i haven't played it is because when i looked at it and i i actually kind of 
got all set up to make the pick or whatever. And uh, I, I just had an epiphany and I just thought, what on earth, why on earth would anyone put any money on these two horrendous teams <laughs> playing a football game? <laughs> like what that it, it was like a, an alarm went off that like, you are an absolute degenerate. If you put any money on either of these two disasters right now, I do think that, like I said, I think the giants have more going for them right now, but I, why on earth would you bet this game? That was basically what came into my mind, even though I do like the giants minus two and a half. It was, it was just kind of a, it was like a, a principle. It was like the principle of it, of, of just not, just not betting on a game between two teams who probably don't care anymore. So I don't know. Am I, am I yeah, wrong I, for doing I, that? You're definitely wrong. You know, money's money, and any winner you can get is a winner. Um, to me, I wouldn't put any money in that game for the simple fact that I would not have to want to watch one second of it. So that's why I would not have any money on that game. And NFL, the, the ticket, which is amazing every week to watch, and when they cut to that game, because they show every score, when they cut to that game, that's when I'm going to the bathroom or running the refrigerator because I don't want to see one play of that game. So you are certified. It, it just feels like a game that is going to be de- – like from a, from a gambling perspective is going to be decided by something stupid. <laughs> like there's going to be some awful fumble with 15 oh, seconds to go – you know, some like miracle at the Meadowlands type of crap is going to happen. That's going to swing the, the game in either direction uh, on the on the betting line, and uh, or a blocked punt or God, uh, some penalty, something stupid's going to happen. And I just don't want to be on the wrong side of that with those two teams. That that just uh, no thanks. So <laughs> uh, the, the Giants will win by a hundred, and I will you know again, I will come back here and complain about it next week that I didn't play it, but. Um, so that, that was the other one I looked at, but all right, well, can I finally string one together in college? Can Bill, you know, inch closer to 500 in NFL stay tuned. Uh, we appreciate everyone listening. Good luck this weekend. Um, probably fade me on college and NFL this weekend, just because I can't get a grasp on college and I'm not exactly doing the smart thing in NFL this week. So maybe fade me and, and, uh, hopefully Bill gets you know, gets the right end of that Carolina Chicago game. So we'll, uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for listening.